Hey guys, so I just came back from a trip from California and it was so amazing. I got to see old friends and, and you know, fellowship with, with people that think like me, that have the same values that I do. And it's just so amazing when that happens. You know, even the Bible says that, um, even the Bible says in Psalms 133, 1, it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in harmony. And then as I was talking to one of my friends, I told her, I'm like, you know what, I, you know what I'm just thinking about? And she's like, what? And I'm like, you know when it says that Mary went to go visit Elizabeth and when she greeted her, Elizabeth's baby jumped, leaped inside of her and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm like, this is what it is when you fellowship. It's like that baby within you jumps, like it leaps, your spirit leaps for joy. Why? Because Mary was carrying Jesus, which is life. Mary was carrying life within her. So it made Elizabeth jump. Her spirit was able to to perceive that. And, and, and it's like a battery when there's positive and negative and then you just feel energized and you feel so recharged. And I was thinking of the, uh, the scripture that says iron sharpens iron and Ecclesiastes 4, 9, it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. It says if one fall, the other one can pick the other one up. So fellowship and community is so important and like-minded people, you know? And then I was talking to my to my mentor, Peter. Um, they're always going to be my mentors, no matter what. <laughs> but I was talking to them, and he said something that blew my mind. He said, Sandra, the enemy will always try to bargain with you. And he was like, why do you think he quoted scripture to Jesus? And I'm like, huh? Because why do you think he quoted scripture to Jesus? Because he'll always try to, like, when you're going to do something, he'll always try to tell you, like, yeah, but it's not bad. You're not sinning. It's in the Bible. And it's like, no. It is bad. It is wrong. Like, even Jesus was not naive. He didn't fall for that. He said, it's also written this and this and this and this. So, like, he, like what he's trying to say is, like, the enemy will always make you feel like it's not a sin. It's, it's not bad. What you're doing is not bad. Because, look, in the Bible, it says this and this and this and this. So, that's what people do. They justify their sin with the Bible. Because that's the enemy's tactic. They'll say, yeah, but in the Bible, it says this and this and this. So, this is okay. And they try to justify it. And it's like, no, but it's not okay. Because it also says this and this and this and this you know obedience is better than sacrifice we have to obey it says my my sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice they do not listen to so then he was telling me he was like the problem is a lot of a lot of people nowadays don't want to correct and i'm going to give you an example when you have a puppy and you're training that dog because you don't want him to pee in, in your house when you see him pee you have to correct him then and there you have to correct the dog because if not what's going to happen if you ne if you never bring correction then the dog is going to pee everywhere and you're not it's not going to be a benefit for him nobody's going to want to take care of him ever and it's not going to be a benefit for you because you're going to be a slave of the dog you're always going to have to be cleaning up after his piss and your house is going to smell really bad so people nowadays they're afraid to correct others they don't want to correct they don't want to be the, the bad guy they don't want to be the mean guy but what, what happens is that that's wrong. That's not biblical because what, what does the Bible say? But the Bible says Jesus would attract, he would attract the multitudes. He would attract them, but then he would offend them. He would offend them. What does it say when Jesus was saying, if you want to be my disciples, you have to eat my, my body and you have to drink my blood. And it says that many of the disciples were like, oh, this is a hard teaching. And they left. And then he told the other 12, oh, do you guys want to leave too? And that's when Peter said, well, where are we going? You have the words of life. But Jesus would do that. He would attract people and then he would offend them. Why? To see who's the real deal? Who really wants me? And this is what pastor peter from throne rooms was telling me he was like a lot of people nowadays they don't know that they don't want god because they want god as long as it's convenient for them but once they have to die to their to flesh once they have to kill their flesh and do what the real jesus says what the real bible says which is deny yourself follow me carry your cross then they don't want to do it he goes so yeah as long as nobody's bothering them and nobody's correcting them they're okay and they're cool they're cool you know he goes but when the real deal comes when, when, when the real gospel hits, then no, 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 because that's offensive. No, 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 because now you're touch now, now it doesn't, now it's not convenient to me. Now it doesn't benefit me. Now you're being too religious. Now you're being too confrontational. Now I don't like this, you know? And then I was thinking of so many things. I was thinking of when Jesus, when he delivered um, that man that was demon possessed from lesions, what happened? The people kicked him out. They were like, they got scared. They kicked, they kicked him out because they didn't understand. They didn't want someone that was so radical. What happened with the with the, the slave girl that was demon possessed? When Pa rebuked that devil, what did they do? They imprisoned him. Why? Because when you got truth and you're walking with salt and you're the light of the world, people, some people will not like it. It's too much for them. They prefer their demon. They prefer their demons. They prefer the money that's coming in with the demons. They prefer the power that they're receiving, the recognition that they're receiving from the material things, from the devils, from the, from the, the darkness. They prefer that. They choose that over Jesus himself. 
And then my mentor was telling me, he was like, Sandra, that's why a little leaven leavens the whole lump. That's why you need to bring correction. But a lot of people, they don't want to bring correction, right? So he goes, that's why you got all of these celebrities nowadays that they think like, oh, it's okay. Like they get saved, they get baptized, and then nothing changes. They continue to speak the same. They continue to dress the same. They continue and they justify because nobody corrects them. And then they think, well, oh, but my pastor allows it. Oh, but everyone in the church is okay with it. Oh, but it's not. there's nothing wrong with that. You know, look at look what happened with the documentary on Hillsong with this with the worship leader. He said, nobody ever told me that that being gay was wrong. He goes, they, they told me that they accepted me like that. Yes, we do. We accept everyone. But you got to change. There's there's a point where you got to change. I went to a, a conference where the pastor was saying, hey, there's a point in life where you got to start showing. And he was talking about with pregnancy. Like there's a point where that belly is going to start showing. There's a point where you got to start showing, you know, and it's just like. It, it, he was like, he was like, imagine you got people, they, they're like, repent for what? So then how do you get saved? Because it's not bad to do anything. So what are you going to repent for? You're going to, oh, but fornication is not like, if nobody tells them it's wrong, then they don't have to repent for fornication. If nobody tells them that drugs is wrong, then they don't have to repent for that. If nobody tells them that cursing is wrong, then they don't have to repent for that. So what are they going to repent for? How are they going to get saved? There's no repentance. There's no true repentance. Without repentance, there's no salvation, you know? So like, like the state of the church guys the bible says that jesus is coming for a bride that is white pure without spot and wrinkle and we need to start living the truth and correcting people when we see things that are wrong with love i'm not saying correct like hey yo no 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 in love yo that's not right you know this god doesn't like that you know because how are they going to get convicted if nobody tells them? The Bible says, how will they know? How will people get saved and nobody preaches to them? How will they know? Uh, how will they know? You know, so let, let me tell you, I know that I, sometimes I come off the wrong way. And I know that sometimes leaders don't like me. Because when I see something wrong, I will say it. I will say, look, this is wrong. This looks wrong. This is wrong. They don't have to agree with me. They can agree with me. It doesn't matter. They can love me. They can hate me. They can reject me. I'm it's fine you know jesus is the real deal and the real deal is holiness 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 like like um i think it was i think it's um bill johnson the one that says like the holy spirit could have chosen to call himself whatever like no and, and i think brian green said it too he says but he chose holy 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 he calls himself holy what is it that the angels cry holy 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 so then he says be holy for i am holy right he says when you worship me you become what you worship so why is the church not walking in holiness where's the salt if we don't if we're not walking as light then how can people see you know i was i, I went on um instagram and only in day they were showing that this police officer he was he was arrested for um he was selling cocaine and he's going to be in jail, I think, like 11 years. I'm like, good. I'm glad that they caught him. Why? Because if they don't catch him, then other police officers are like, oh, he's making good money. He doesn't get caught. I'm going to do the same thing. And then this is how corruption starts. And then one is like, oh, it's okay. Oh, oh, And then by the time you know it, nobody respects the police officers because now police officers, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now they're all corrupt and they're just abusing of their power. So it's like, no, you have to bring correction and you have to show the example. What happened in the book of Esther with Vashti, with Queen Vashti, when King exorcises? I think I'm pronouncing it right. I'm not sure. When he asked for Queen Vashti to come inside of his, to come to his presence and she refused, what did his wise men, his advisors tell him? They said, listen, you got to execute her out, like take her out, you know, banish her, like for you not to see her so that you can make it a point for all the other women that what she did is wrong. Because if not, other women are going to think that that behavior is okay. And they're going to start doing the same thing to their husbands. So you got to make an example and say, this is not right. And this are the consequences for that. You know, so it's not that you're mean. It's that you're, 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 you're putting, you're putting a barrier. You're putting, this is a standard. This is, this is what it is. God wants everyone to be saved, but being saved is not just saying, oh, I confess Jesus and going to church. That's not what being saved is. Being saved is living for Jesus. It's carrying your cross. It's dying to yourself and it's obeying him. It's choosing him over money. It's choosing him over convenience. It's choosing him over benefit. It's choosing him over the flesh. It's choosing him over what feels good to the flesh. So guys, I'm sorry, I got really into it. Um, but I, I don't know. I was in my I was in my zone this this weekend. So I came back feeling very good. So thanks for watching guys. God bless and let's pray for the church.